Support. No, I still, please. This is the first time since the beginning of April we've had something in every genre, so I'm excited. This'll be for the week of July 9th. 2019. On this day in music back in 1954, a 19-year-old Elvis Presley signed his very first recording contract with Sun Records. Soon after, he gave notice that he would be leaving his job at the Crown Electric Company. <laughs> To be perfectly frank, I was never one for Bach, I have heard it way too much. That being said, I actually very much enjoyed these renditions of the sonatas and preludes, so Emmy Ferguson did a really good job keeping my attention. Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. The man has had quite the career. He's performed with Duke Ellington, John Coltrane, Ornette Coleman, among many others. And he's very good at incorporating South African vibes into his music as well, seeing as he's from Cape Town. It's the gift we give, it's the antidote we bring to all. Honestly, I can always recommend anything by Chick Corea. The special thing about this one, though, is he got the band back together that did My Spanish Heart back in 1976, hence Chick Corea and the Spanish Heart Band. So if you enjoyed that one, you're going to enjoy this one. This is the sequel album to the thing Smith and Hay did last year, simply titled Jazz, hence Jazz Part 2. This time they brought along King Tech as well. The fun thing about it though, and they actually say this in the very first track of the album, is that every single song on here follows the same form. So I encourage you to listen through it and see if you can't pick up on it. <laughs> There are rock supergroups, but then there are specifically rock jazz fusion supergroups like the Aristocrats, which consist of Guthrie, Govan, Brian Beller, and Marco Miniman. So if you really like jazz rock fusion, you're pretty much getting the best of the best here. Singing. What I like about the Black Keys is their compositional process. When they meet up, they don't do anything in advance and all of the music is made in the studio on the fly, including the vocal lines, although he does work on the lyrics later, but still, it's always impressive to hear what they come up with. What if stories that you telling on fuck? It's a great album, and it has great features, including Nipsey Hussle. But there's just one thing that bugs me about it. Since this is Mustard's album, and obviously he made every single track on said album, is the mustard on that beat tag really necessary on every single song? Chance, acid rapper, soccer, hacky sacker, cocky, khaki, jacket, jacker, slap, happy, faggot, slapper, whoop, whoop, or rocky, rocket launcher, shake that. So yes, this came out back in 2013, but Chance has now officially released both this album and 10 Day onto all of the streams services. So if you really wanted your Chance the Rapper fix on your favorite streaming platform, you now have that option. While it's not nearly as long as Heartbreak on a Full Moon, which to be fair was a double album, this album still has like 32 tracks if you count the three bonus tracks as well. So if you're a big Chris Brown fan, boy do you have a lot more Chris Brown to listen to. So apparently this was inspired by Flying Lotus's work in terms of using loops and performing them live. Tom York would create these unfinished and I quote sprawling tracks and send them to his buddy Nigel Godrick who would then create small loops of the unfinished tracks and he would send them back to which Tom York would then come up with vocal lines for. Also Philip Selway contributes some drum tracks on here so there's your radio head fix. So there 
are some great collaborations on this album, like the band A Day to Remember, Elohim, or Flux Pavilion. But I think the most fun thing about this is, yes, Marshmallow actually does sing, and you can hear his singing on this album done very well, in my opinion. And now I need some help from the maestro, please! Chance, acid rapper, soccer, hacky sacker, cocky khaki jacket jacker, slap happy faggot slapper, whoop, whoop, a rocky rocket launcher, shake that- Unfortunately, Juice is not included in the streaming version of the mixtape because they couldn't get the sample clear in time. Donny Hathaway's jealous guy. Regardless, still do play this track, though, because Chance actually explains it in the 30-second blurb that replaces Juice that all proceeds from this track specifically go to help social work. And he also says is that that new album is coming soon, so here's hoping. You can live, you can fact, Low High, the lead single off this album, is the first song ever to simultaneously top the mainstream rock, adult alternative songs, rock airplay, and alternative songs. So the Black Keys are clearly doing something right. If you want something else to chew on besides where she is on her tour, that very first track, the one that's just exclamation marks, where she slurps out her Invisalign retainer, that was done to add a sense of humor to the album because, you know, it's overall quite dark. Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the hotel road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. I'm gonna take my horse. Old Town Road, still number one. 14 weeks. Two more weeks to tie that record. Indigo. Baby, what you wanna do tonight? Uh, what you got for me to try? Yeah. This is his first number one album since 2012's Fortune. And the song he does with Drake, No Guidance, is his highest charting since 2013's Loyal. So he's clearly doing well with this album. So much new music. Go listen to all of it. Or, you know, at least try to. I mean, I encourage you to listen to all of it. And now I need some help on the rest, please. 